The presentation of Toledo Stories is made possible in part by Key Bank, celebrating the strength of our region's history and supporting the promise of its future. Key Bank, achieve anything. And by the generous financial support of viewers like you. Thank you. Millie Benson is world-renowned as an author and journalist, but her talents were even broader than most recognize. Her first career was in music. Her mother, a talented musician herself, gave young Millie a xylophone for Christmas. Millie took to the instrument quickly, enjoying its physicality as much as its musical qualities. While still in high school, Millie mastered playing with six hammers, a feat that won her gigs with local orchestras. Her xylophone helped put her through college in Iowa, her performances becoming frequent enough to warrant her renting a practice studio. After she landed her first job with a newspaper in Clinton, Iowa, her busy newsroom schedule left her little time to practice. Her xylophone days came to an end when she boldly agreed to perform with a vaudeville orchestra on New Year's Eve, a concert that proved a disaster, and as she later wrote, marked the end of my career in music. The xylophone she kept after she married and moved to Ohio, and though she no longer publicly performed, it still helped pay her expenses. When the banks failed during the Great Depression, Millie stashed her savings in its pipes. And now, Toledo Stories presents The Storied Life of Millie Benson. Mildred Wirt Benson. You may not recognize her by name, but chances are you are very familiar with her work. She is the author of the first Nancy Drew mystery stories, the original Carolyn Keene. Nancy Drew is the heroine of a series of children's books, which debuted in 1930 and presented a type of heroine that had not existed in girls' literature before that time. And she was an immediate success. I never anticipated any success in fact, I don't think anyone ever anticipated a success such as Nancy Drew has had. But I did know that I was creating something that was an unusual book. I knew it was, I knew from the way I felt as I wrote that, it, that I was writing something that was, that would be popular. Millie Benson has written more than 130 children's series books, but her illustrious career also includes chapters as a journalist, pilot, mother, athlete, adventurer, and role model. Together, they tell the storied life of Millie Benson. Mildred Augustine was born in Ladora, Iowa in 1905. The daughter of the town doctor, Millie was encouraged to explore the world around her and enjoyed freedom and opportunities uncommon for young girls at the time. Life was strict for girls in those days, but I was not raised as strictly as some girls. I read every book I could borrow in the town. The town only had about two or three hundred people. And I borrowed every single book that I could get from anybody in the town. You didn't hear much about hobbies in my day. You just did whatever there was available. And in a small town, there wasn't much of anything. We played basketball and things like that, but girls were discouraged from all sorts of athletics. And I thought that tooth and toenail right from the start, because I felt that girls should be able to do the same things that boys did. Millie was a natural athlete and an especially gifted swimmer and diver. Although she excelled at sports, her true passion was writing. My mother supported me in wanting to write. My father laughed about it and said I would never make enough to live on, which was probably very true. He said if I wanted to make any money to go into something else. But that was the first thing I can remember saying was that I wanted to be a writer when I grew up. I began by selling to 
the church papers and they only paid a few dollars for a story, short story. But I, I remember I probably sent out a hundred of them before I sold one. And then suddenly I sold one and I got two fifty, two dollars for fifty cents for it. And I, that made me a writer. So from then on I was hooked. <laughs> Millie attended the University of Iowa and majored in journalism. She worked on the school newspaper for editor George Gallup, creator of the Gallup Poll. She participated in numerous clubs and activities and competed on the women's swimming and diving teams. After earning her degree in just three years, Millie landed a job at an Iowa newspaper. Although she'd ultimately spend most of her life writing in a newsroom, at age 22, she wanted more. She traveled to New York looking for work. Jack Armstrong! Jack Armstrong! Jack Armstrong! Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Before the advent of radio and television, series fiction books were one of the most popular sources of entertainment, providing readers with recurring installments of action, adventure, and mystery stories. Edward Stratemeyer uh, cut his teeth as a writer in the world of dime novels and story papers in the late 19th century. It's not that he was the first person to write serial stories for children, but he was the first person to do it systematically on a large scale. He's been compared to Henry Ford. In 1905, he established what he called the Stratemeyer Literary Syndicate, which was his mass production of series books. Stratemeyer himself was not actually the publisher. He was more like a literary agent that would hire all these, these ghost writers. And because he had so many ideas and not enough time to, to write the books himself, what he would do would be write a, a short synopsis of a book, sometimes just like a paragraph long, and then he'd farm it out to his friends. He was a newspaper man, and, and he would give these little uh, plot lines or sometimes outlines to his friends, mainly people from the New York Evening News, uh, and they would write the, the books. Edward Stratemeyer created America's most popular children's fiction series. The Rover Boys, Tom Swift, the Bobsy Twins, and the Hardy Boys. The books were written by ghost writers who signed away all royalties and rights to the characters and stories in exchange for a flat fee. Plots and outlines were provided, and even the pseudonyms were created and controlled by Stratemeyer. And you had the Bobsy Twins by Laura Lee Hope and the Hardy Boys by Franklin W. Dixon. And there was no Franklin W. Dixon. There was no Laura Lee Hope. These were all ghostwritten by many, many different people. Mildred Augustine was a graduate student at the University of Iowa studying journalism. She saw an advertisement that a firm in New York was looking for writers to uh, write children's books based on outlines supplied. She traveled to New York and met with Edward Stratemeyer. At that time, Stratemeyer said he had no work for her, but soon thereafter he contacted her again and asked her if she'd like to try her hand at a faltering series that had been running for a number of years called the Ruth Fielding series about uh, a young woman with a, an enterprising mind and a nose for adventure. Millie wrote Ruth Fielding and her great scenario while in grad school and married Asa Wirt an Associated Press correspondent, but continued writing Ruth Fielding books for Stratemeyer. He uh, liked her work so much that he contacted her in 1929 to ask if she wanted another assignment as well. He had observed that the Hardy Boys were selling pretty well, so judging by the fact that little boys liked to read about detectives, he thought, what about little girls? The success of the Hardy Boys inspired Edward Stratemeyer to develop a modern girl detective series, and Nancy Drew was born. But Millie's take on his new heroine wasn't exactly what he had in mind. In his outlines, Edward Stratemeyer stated that Nancy Drew was to be an up-to-date modern young lady, but he didn't say how she was modern. And the way Millie invented Nancy to fit that, that description was very unique for that time. Nancy was just at times very brash 
and so independent that Stratemeyer didn't even like what Millie had done with the character. She was so different from any heroine that had come before. Girls' books and boys' books in his mind followed a certain pattern, and if you broke that pattern, why, it bothered him. And uh, so he, uh, he didn't think that, uh, that I created the character of Nancy uh, in the way that he had anticipated. So, uh, but he, uh, he was very liberal, and he submitted it, as I wrote it, to the publisher, and the publisher was very enthusiastic. Stratemeyer was right about the public's acceptance of a girl detective. Nancy Drew struck a nerve with readers, and the series was an immediate success. But Nancy's characteristic independence proved as exciting as the adventures themselves. I think one of the most interesting things about her as a heroine in children's literature, especially for girls, is the fact that she was so free-spirited and so independent at a time when girls really didn't have as much independence as they do have now. Nancy was just by her by herself. Um, of course, she had a, her housekeeper and her father, but they never really seemed to interfere with her. She was just out there by herself or with her chums. What a wonderful idea. What girl wouldn't want that? She's a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, Midwestern ideal of femininity. Brave, adventuresome, a strong sense of right and wrong. Now, Mildred added some personal touches. Uh, Edward Stratemeyer specified that Nancy be energetic. Mildred, who was herself a pretty accomplished athlete, wound up riding Nancy Drew in such a way that she was pretty athletic too. It was not, I didn't intentionally put myself into it, but I think I did a lot of it. Remember that in the times that I began writing those books, girls had no freedom and there were, there were no books that advocated it. They advocated uh, stay at home and, and look after the house and the children. And this was exactly the opposite of all that. And I think the population, the young population was just ready for that. Mildred cared about creating a character that really said something to girls. She has spoken explicitly of trying to invest her character with a sense of independence, not wanting to write a namby-pamby heroine. She took it personally. She took Nancy Drew personally. I think Nancy Drew would probably have succeeded moderately in the market without Mildred. I don't think she would have become a blockbuster if it weren't for Mildred. In the spring of 1930, just after the first Nancy Drew books were published, Edward Stratemeyer died. His daughters, Harriet and Edna, took over the business and, at the request of the publisher, retained Mildred Wirt as the ghostwriter of the Nancy Drew series. Millie secretly wrote 23 of the first 30 Nancy Drew mysteries, as well as several other titles for the Stratemeyer Syndicate. She was writing the Nancy Drew mystery stories, the Dana Girl mystery stories, which were also supposedly written by Carolyn Keene, the Honey Bunch series, Doris Force, and the Kay Tracy mystery stories, too. Besides all the books that she wrote for the Stratemeyer Syndicate, she wrote 74 titles of her own. She wrote mystery stories, adventure stories, historical fiction. She was quite prolific. In 1936 alone, Mildred Wirt gave birth to a daughter and still found time to publish 10 books. Writing under her own name or a variety of pseudonyms, her titles often competed with the books she wrote for the Stratemeyer Syndicate. For myself, I always liked Penny Parker. She was a newspaper reporter. And I always said she was a better Nancy Drew than Nancy Drew. <laughs> but no one else agreed with me, apparently, because it, was, it never had the distribution. Millie was writing these books on the side. Millie was also a newspaper reporter. She worked at the Toledo Times and later the Toledo Blade. Uh, plus, she also was a wife and mother. Um, her husband was Asa Wirt, who was an Associated Press man, and in fact, he became quite ill, and so she was at home taking care of him with the typewriter set up next to his sick bed. And then she had her daughter, Peggy, who uh, was there also. So she was, you know, really burning a candle with many ends. After Asa Wirt died in 1946, 
Millie continued writing and working full-time as courthouse reporter for the Toledo Times. Her ability to write on a deadline and dogged pursuit of a story made her invaluable in the newsroom. I guess I was tenacious. I, I liked hard news, and uh, most women do not care much for hard news. They'd rather do features, but I liked hard news. And I know I covered the county commissioners, and sometimes I didn't want to talk to you. So I parked myself out in the, in the waiting room there, and I figured I'd get him when he came out. The day went on, and he didn't come out, and pretty soon I caught on, and he'd gone out through the window. <laughs> Mildred Benson was determined in pursuit of a story that she asked tough questions, still does, and um, anyone who expects an easy interview with her um, uh, is probably in for surprise because she was first and foremost a great reporter. In 1950, Millie married another newspaper man, George Benson, editor for the Times. But her career as an author was winding down. Television reduced demand for series books, and Harriet Adams was taking greater control of the Stratemeyer Syndicate, overseeing series development, writing, and even rewriting books from veteran ghostwriters. Millie wrote her last Nancy Drew mystery in 1953, but the final published volume bore little resemblance to her original manuscript. In 1959, Millie was widowed for the second time. She never remarried. Instead, she rediscovered that sense of boundless independence from her youth, and Millie's adventures after age 60 are reminiscent of the exploits of Nancy Drew herself. Fascinated by archaeology, she chartered bush pilots to fly her into Central America to visit the Mayan ruins and explore the rainforests. Millie's exploits were published in several papers. A feature story on taking an introductory flying lesson inspired Millie to pursue her private pilot's license. She eventually earned her instrument, commercial, and seaplane ratings and flew her own plane cross-country. She also continued working for the Toledo Blade, stubbornly resisting any thoughts of retirement. She transitioned from reporting to writing a weekly feature column and was still on the go at age 96. She clearly is the most remarkable person I've met in this business. There's a woman who's been with our organization since 1944. Uh, she started at the old Toledo Times, which uh, she outlived. Uh, by a, a long measure, and uh, has been with us since, since uh, World War II. And I think of her first and foremost as a journalist, and secondarily uh, as an author, but she's achieved equal renown, as far as I'm concerned, in both endeavors. Beginning in 1959, the Nancy Drew mysteries were updated and overhauled to appeal to modern readers, and Millie's original stories disappeared from shelves. The books enjoyed continued popularity, but Millie Benson's role remained a secret. I uh, probably could have gotten a lawyer and I could have tapped into the entire enterprise, but I didn't want to go through all that. And I didn't care that much. I wrote because I liked to write and because I wanted to produce books that girls would enjoy. And so I didn't care too much, but uh, it, it got to be, I'd, my friends knew I wrote, wrote the books, and that was sufficient for me, but gradually it got so that she put up, Mrs. Adams put out publicity to the fact that she was the author, and people were reading that, and they said, well, you said you were, that you wrote the books. And so one day my daughter came home, she was just a young girl, and she came home and she said, what have you been doing all these years? Lying about that? You're, you never wrote to Nancy Drew. And I said, well, you sit, were right here in the house and you'd come up and look over my shoulder when I was writing it. She said, yeah, that was true, I did. <laughs> and I thought, well, if, if my own daughter begins to doubt my integrity, it's time that I uh, let the truth be known. So when people ask me, I stuck my neck out and I told them the truth, which was that I wrote the books. 
As the 50th anniversary of Nancy Drew approached, a rift developed between the Stratemeyer Syndicate and their longtime publisher, Grosset and Dunlap. A lawsuit ensued after Stratemeyer signed a new publishing contract with Simon and & Schuster, and Mildred Benson was called to testify during the proceedings. Attorneys for Grosset and Dunlap subpoenaed all of the old documents from the Stratemeyer Syndicate, and included with these documents were all the releases that Millie had signed, saying that Millie had actually written these books. So this was the very first time that it could go on public record that th there was solid proof that Millie was the true Carolyn Keene. Even after the lawsuit, Millie lived in relative obscurity until 1993, when the University of Iowa hosted a Nancy Drew conference which attracted the attention of literary scholars, collectors, and fans, and started a nationwide celebration of the books and the original author. I would just as a personal favor like ask you to not use my age. I know some of you will probably do it anyway, so I'm going to tell you I'm 130 today. <laughs> and so if you're going to violate it, please put it in accurately and say 130. The Nancy Drew Conference at the University of Iowa was pretty overwhelming. Not only was it covered by national media, they had book dealers there, um, and then we had the fans. People were there from all over the country to just feast on you know, this one literary character. And even though it was about Nancy Drew, it really was to help bring Millie into the limelight, which it most certainly did. I promise I'll always keep a special place in my heart for the people of Iowa, the university, and all of you. Thank you. Millie received praise and honors from groups and individuals all over the country. Her Underwood typewriter was enshrined in the Smithsonian, and she was inducted into the Women's Hall of Fame in her adopted state of Ohio. I had the honor of escorting Millie to Columbus and it was fascinating to sit there in the State House atrium with about oh, six, seven hundred people, most of them women. And Mildred Benson was introduced first among the ten inductees. They were doing it alphabetically. And they began to read her bio, a reporter for the uh, Toledo Times, then the Toledo Blade, and going through her, her life's history. And when they got to the part about the Nancy Drew mystery books and the fact that she was the original Carolyn Keene, it was like a wave washing across this huge crowd, uh, a wave of recognition and admiration and respect and affection and love for what she had done for them. And when they finally said, and so ladies and gentlemen, our first inductee, the original Carolyn Keene, Mildred Benson, the entire crowd just rose to its feet and applauded wildly for an extended period while Mildred uh, walked across the stage to receive her honor. And it was just a magical moment. After years of anonymity, Mildred Wirt Benson became an instant celebrity. For this very private woman, the resulting fame has been a blessing and a curse. Suddenly she became inundated with requests for letters and articles and, and autographs. And it got to the point where she was getting cartons of books delivered to her, not only at home, but at the Toledo Blade office for her to autograph. And she finally got to the point where she had to just send them back unopened. As a reporter, as a journalist, she's not used to being the center of attention. She's used to writing about it, about others. Um, I think she is a little bit uncomfortable with all the attention, but recognizes too that she gave America something very special and therefore uh, America wants to salute her back. Today, decades after the secret of the old clock hit bookstores and libraries, the original Nancy Drew mystery stories are once again being published for new readers to experience and older fans to revisit. The fictional girl detective still entertains and inspires readers, especially young women, thanks to the characteristics created and embodied by Millie Benson. I didn't think I was going to ever inspire anyone. I never, I never dreamed that would be a result. I get from lawyers and doctors and 
And in all walks of life, they, they say that I inspired them to go on and become a uh, success in their careers. That's rather gratifying. It's a particular pleasure to know that Mildred Wirt was so much like this character. Um, finding out that there's no real Carolyn Keene, the pen name used for the series, has been somewhat disappointing. But it has given a lot of people a great deal of joy to know that there was a real Carolyn Keene, at least for the first 20 years or so, and that she really was very much like this character that she wrote. It wasn't all just a fantasy. To a lot of Nancy Drew fans, this is sort of the cherry on top of the sundae, knowing that the real author is such a, an admirable woman in her own right. To learn more about the storied life of Millie Benson, check out these resources. There's a number of books. Uh, first, Rediscovering Nancy Drew by Carolyn Stewart Dyer. Secondly, the Nancy Drew Scrapbook by Karen Plunkett Powell. Uh, there are numerous resources on the web as well. Uh, first would be the Mildred A. Wirt Benson website. And this is a uh, extremely well done website that contains all the information you want to know about the novels, other aspects of Millie Benson's career, and has a very touching Millie Benson memorial page, which includes uh, reminiscences and memories of Millie Benson from many people. You can also go to the unofficial Nancy Drew homepage, which contains a full bibliography and descriptions of the books, message boards and chat rooms, and, and a marketplace uh, of the Nancy Drew books as well. Uh, you can also, of course, find much more information about local history at the Toledo's Attic website. You can also find links to each of these resources on the WGTE website at WGTE.org. Thanks for joining us for Toledo Stories. I'm Timothy Messer Cruz. I'll see you next time. The presentation of Toledo Stories is made possible in part by Key Bank celebrating the strength of our region's history and supporting the promise of its future. Key Bank. Achieve anything. And by the generous financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.